Hello and welcome to another iMovie 11 tutorial. This also works in iMovie 09, so don't worry. Today we'll be going over how to do multiple pictures and pictures in iMovie. So as you may recall from my previous tutorial, we, uh, we discussed the sniper scope. That was basically just one picture in picture. And I said, well, iMovie only allows for two layers. Well, let's show you how to do a third. Kind of. So go to iMovie, click on Preferences. Under the General tab, make sure the Show Advanced Tools box is checked. I go through that step uh, every tutorial because, you know, I get new people on board, so just want to keep everybody on the same page. So here we have uh, my footage. It's just default footage from uh, iMovie. It's a nice, pretty picture of stars and space. So let's say that's our video and now let's add a picture so I found this PNG file drag it put it in place click picture in picture and there we go we have our video file there so as you can see in uh, it comes default with that Ken Burns effect well let's get rid of that just click crop and it goes away. There you go. Now here we have our two layers. The blue is the closest to the camera. In other words, the foreground. What's on bottom, not in blue, is the background. So now let's try and add that third layer. So I'm going to grab a uh, muzzle flash here, drag it, and I see the red line. There we go. Let go. And it doesn't let me do picture in picture. So there you go. That's what this tutorial is about. Getting around only having one picture in picture. You also have to make sure you're working correctly from the background to the foreground. I would not want the muzzle flash to be behind the big cannon here. I want the cannon to be behind the muzzle flash. So in other words, I'm adding what's closest to the camera last. In this case, the muzzle flash is closest to the camera, so I add that last. So now let's export this footage. You go share, export movie. Um, I'm just going to do uh, medium quality for now to save some time. Just put it on the desktop. And here's our project, nice and exported. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it my favorite method, just putting it straight into the event library, dragging and dropping. Wait for the file to import in. And here's our footage. So what I'm going to do is take our current project and just delete it. I don't need it. This thing will pop up saying you've modified your project. Well, we're not finished with our project. You know, don't just hit OK. Don't get scared of the pop-up. So drag your video footage, put it into your project library. Oh, and now look at this. We have only one layer, but we have two movie assets. We have our background and we have our image here. Only one layer required. All because we exported and then re-imported. This is a very important concept and I use this frequently before I upgraded to other movie editing software. So the main concept is exporting and then re-importing. So let's grab that muzzle flash, drag it to the spot we want, click picture in picture again, and oh look, and ta-da, now we have three special effects with only two layers. If I wanted to add another item, I again just export and re-import. And what I re-import is going to have one, two, three things, and then I could add a fourth item. So it's pretty handy, pretty convenient. Um, yeah, the muzzle flash looks pretty ridiculous, but just tutorial purposes, don't worry. So I have to re-emphasize this, though. Make sure you are working from the background to the foreground. If I wanted to add another cannon over here, but behind it, I'd have to actually start from the beginning because you can't edit this out. 
Now, the muzzle flash comes from, uh, I have mine coming from Action Essentials 2. I'll be going over muzzle flashes in the future. So don't worry about that. Um, if you currently know how to use muzzle flashes, I, I'm just going to explain this to you now. If you hit play, iMovie, see? Look, it froze. Oh my god, I'm panicking. Must write a comment. No, you don't. The high quality special effects from uh, Action Essentials actually causes iMovie to lag. iMovie is not a super powerful program. It's not made to do big action films. So basically that's how I crashed iMovie. I had so many muzzle flashes and explosions it, uh, it just wouldn't function anymore. I do one click and I wait 20 minutes and then it just quits. If, so if you plan on doing big projects, I highly recommend upgrading to something else. I personally use Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Express, as you've probably seen in my other tutorials. However, before I got those, I used iMovie quite a bit, so it's doable. If you plan on doing a project that's like 60 layers big, you just gotta upgrade. But, you know, for simple things, maybe just a quick story, this could work out for you. So don't worry about the freezing. It, what you want to worry about is how your project looks when you export it, not how iMovie plays it. That's the other take-home message. So I hope this helps. I hope this explains to you a bit about the limitations of iMovie. And so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Uh, the, what we'll be working on this summer is green screen footage, kind of kind of my personal favorite because you can do anything with green screen footage lots of fun stuff there it's gonna take a bit of time to explain all those so if it's something you're interested in be sure to subscribe if you're not already we'll be going over how to get the most out of your green screen how to position green screen items uh, getting the best quality fixing all those ghosting effects and uh, adding other CG elements to it so should be a fun summer hope you follow along. I highly suggest subscribing to it. We go through a lot of uh, basics and advanced techniques into green screen footage there. So thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe. I make an iMovie tutorial every two weeks. Make sure you hit like so other knows this is a good tutorial. You can follow me on Twitter if you want to get updates that way. Make sure to check out the description. I put a lot of work into the description. It provides a nice outline for the tutorial. Frequently asked questions are answered in there. If your question is not answered in the description, feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to respond. If you have a special effects request, also post that as a comment. So once again, thanks for subscribing. I look forward to helping you with your movies and your future projects.